So if you add enough energy to the molecule, you can make it vibrate, rotate, translate. Oh, but you can also, if you add enough energy, break apart the atoms from each other. Now, we're talking about the energy that it takes to either make or break bonds. Okay, that's potential energy. That's bond energy. So, EP is talking about, or EP, energy potential, eh, potential energy. That is talking about bond energy. Now, this bond was inside the molecule. Here's an atom, here's an atom. This bond is inside this molecule, within the molecule. And so this bond is called an intramolecular bond. Intra means within. So when you disturb an intramolecular bond, we're talking about the bond that keeps the atoms together in a molecule. But you know, molecules can actually be attracted to one another to form solids and liquids. And so that type of bonding is also significant. Now, we don't have little sticks to put these together, but if you pretended that that was HCl, and here's another molecule of HCl, well, because it's a polar molecule, that's from Chemistry Junior, then these two, which have partially positive and negative regions, can attract each other. When they do, you can make a liquid or a solid. Now, when you do that, there's a bond that's established. It's a force of attraction. That's what a bond is. That's called an intermolecular bond because inter means between, right? When you play interscholastic sports, that's between other schools. But when you play intramurals, that's like playing games inside your school, right? So this force of attraction here between molecules is intermolecular and it's very significant in terms of phase changes, solids, liquids, gases. So now we go to phase change. But before we do move on to phase change, you know, we should talk about heat capacity first. Now, the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy that can be absorbed or released by any substance, well, one gram of that substance, to be able to raise it one degree Celsius. So, I think some of you are familiar that water has what we say is a high heat capacity compared to most substances at 4.19 joules to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. So heat capacities are going to be important for the formulas that we're going to be doing pretty soon. And I wanted to touch upon this because actually it has something very clever to do with the kinetic energy definitions of vibrational, rotational, and translational energies that we've talked about. Okay, now. Here's hydrogen, and here's its heat capacity from any kind of data chart that you can find. So, uh, hydrogen has a specific heat capacity of 14.304 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I wrote down helium's here and neon's heat capacity here as well. Hydrogen has a higher heat capacity than either of these two. And it seems like when the molar masses increase of these chemicals, that the heat capacities go down. Well, you know what? We're not really comparing here apples to apples, if you know what I mean. Because, a, because one gram of hydrogen actually does have in it more molecules of H2 than one gram of helium does. Their molar masses are different. So you can't compare specific heat capacities and really get any kind of information out of them, but you can if you take the molar mass of the chemical like hydrogen, for instance, at 2.02 .02 grams per mole, and you multiply it by that heat capacity, then you'll get this. Now look, I do a method here called dimensional analysis, unit cancellation, factor labeling, whatever you want to call it. It's canceling units, and it's the best way to be able to do any type of calculation. As a matter of fact, you, your teachers are going to be very, I think they're going to really stress the fact that you need to cancel units all the time when you do calculations. That's the way it is in my class. So, if you multiply a molar mass times a specific heat capacity, the grams cancel, and you're left with joules per mole degrees Celsius, which is now called not a specific heat capacity, but a molar heat capacity. Now, when you do the molar heat capacity calculation for hydrogen and get 28.9, then you do it for the helium and the neon over here, and you get 
absolutely identical numbers to each other. Oh, that is very cool. But is there a reason for it? Well, some people will say, yeah, well, of course, because they're both noble gases. So there. Ah, that's not good enough. You can't, you can't do that. You can't explain it that way.